uh, both uh, Vladimir Putin and Bashar al-Assad have had proven track records of protecting Christian communities. Uh, Bashar al-Assad has gone through extensive lengths to protect the ancient Christians in his country with whatever resource he had. Um, and Vladimir Putin, uh, over the past 20 years of his presidency, has rebuilt countless churches all over Russia. And I see this as more as uh, Barack Obama and his cronies attack on Christianity, attack on uh, it's the freedom. I, I think you look, I define Obama's motives as a progressive Islamist takeover of the West and the world. And I think that's what you're saying. Uh, on the other hand, you have Russia, who for, for all of its faults and all of its, let us say, self-interests, whether it be in Crimea, Ukraine or now in Syria, is still the greatest defender of the Christian people in the Middle East right now. There are no other defenders of the Christians. Obama refuses to grant Christians from Iraq asylum here in America while he's flooding America with Muslims from Syria. There's no question in my mind you're 100% right. It's that simple. And again, I'm not going to glorify Assad, but I will tell you right now, Assad is far better for the survival of the Jews and the Christians in Syria than what might follow. And I don't understand the Jewish people any more than I understand... Well, nuclear physics. I can never understand liberal Jews. They're always on the wrong side of things politically. They don't even understand the danger they're putting themselves in by attacking Putin in this case. Do you know that there's a sizable Syrian Jewish community in Syria right now that is protected by Assad that will be destroyed, decimated, subjected to genocide should Assad be allowed to fall and yet not a word from the Jews? Not a word from the rabbi who intoned when the Pope was here. But Not one word. Not one word from the liberal Jewish establishment about where do the Jews stand with regard to the Syrian Jewish community. Not a word. They haven't gotten their talking points yet from the White House. So here we stand. WJR, John, your opinion, please. Go ahead. I support Russia's airstrikes in Syria because I want ISIS eliminated. But what makes me very nervous is China and Russia's partnership because China is building a canal through Central America, which the media is really giving no coverage of, just like they're not giving any coverage of the aircraft carrier that they have in the Middle East. This canal could allow Chinese submarines to cross over from the Pacific to the Atlantic. So what makes me very nervous is their partnership with Russia. You know, well, you're, you're absolutely right. But remember, China, according to the reports that I read, has, in fact, whether the aircraft carrier is there or not is a matter of dispute. But there are Chinese troops in the area in and in coordination now with Russian troops and Iranian troops to take out ISIS. And the Chinese specifically are there, specifically in Syria. They're going to hunt down and kill the Uyghurs who are Muslims, uh, they do not want these Uyghur Chinese returning to, to China and undermining the Chinese government. I don't think that's a bad thing, do you? You don't want the Muslims taking over any more of China than they already have, do you? No, I want them stopped from, from here. That's why I'm... Well, okay, so the enemy of our enemy is our friend. In this case, China and Russia are doing what Barry from Honolulu has not done. We keep hearing... All of a sudden, we hear today, we've had an air campaign against ISIS for well over a year. What an embarrassing statement that is. A year and they can't wipe out ISIS? Instead, it's metastasized, taking over territory larger than that of Great Britain? So that means the U.S. Air Force has failed, doesn't it? If we've been conducting a campaign for a year. And it's not that the Air Force that fe failed. It's Barry, o o o Barry uh, Obama who has failed by, by undermining, by misleading the Air Force, by misleading the American people. That's my opinion. If there are no other uh, callers who can elucidate further on this issue, we'll move on to another topic. But I see we have quite a few good, intelligent callers, and I've got to get them. By the way, this just came out. Shock of all shocks. White people reject claims of white privilege, study finds. You mean they're not catering and, cow and cowering before Black Lives Matter? I wonder why.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So the first Russian airstrikes in Syria demark a new chapter in Middle Eastern history. It has deeply affected all the surrounding nations, especially Israel, because Russia's first combat air missions over Syria have stopped Israel's freedom to strike enemies from Syrian and Lebanese skies. Do you understand that it's changed the entire picture? Meyer, I don't think you agree with me on WABC. Go ahead, make your case. We have a minute to do so. Mr. Savage, I, I believe that the state of Israel does not want the Assad regime, the regime to fall, and the state of Israel represents the majority of world Jewry. Uh, there might be a slight few liberals who are in the White House and in Washington and all that, but in general, the Jewish communities support the Assad regime, as you did mention. The Assad regime is good to the Jewish community. In when, when did a Jewish leader come out recently and support the Assad regime when they know that Obama opposes it? They've all dummied up and sh shut their mouths. They have nothing to say about it all of a sudden. No, that... When, is it, when has any Jewish group come out and said, wait a minute, he may be a bad guy, but the Jews are protected by him, the Christians are protected by him, and the Islamists will kill the Jews and Christians. When have you heard a Jew say that? Mr. Netanyahu says that all the time. Good. Okay. Well, you answered the question. We just had a good discussion. You gave me the answer. But Israel's not too happy because Israel's defense minister, Moshe Alan, denied Tuesday night. He denied last night that Israel was coordinating its operations with the Russian army. You know, they said, no, we're not cooperating with them. My friends, the things are changing too fast for most of us to follow this. The Russian military buildup is far greater than imagined by anyone in the U.S. or in Israel or elsewhere. Russia outsmarted everybody. They are going to do what they want to do. They're going to take out the Free Syrian Army and then they're going to take out ISIS. At the end of the day, the world will be a safer place, my opinion. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Putin's ambitions are blindingly obvious, my friends. He wants to prop up Assad, play kingmaker in any transition, undermine U.S. policy and operations, and ultimately expand Russian power in the Middle East to a degree as I mentioned, unseen since 1973. Right, this that's week at the United Nations. This is the same lunatic who went to Egypt after uh, the generals were overthrown and tried to prop up the generals, excuse me, uh, to, to prop up the Muslim Brotherhood, pardon me. This is the same lunatic McCain who started the war in the Ukraine by going there and steaming up the population against the corrupt leadership, corrupt as he was, he was elected, duly elected. McCain stirred them up to a revolution. This man is a maniac, a warmonger his entire life. So are you confused? Do you care? Let me give you a little more information before you draw your eyes shut and leave the show and say, I can't take anymore. Right now, we're seeing Russia airstrikes over Syria. We don't know what they are. We hear that they're not really after ISIS. We hear that they're going after the Syrian rebel operations who are trying to knock out Assad and they're going to defend Assad. Do you know the following? You haven't seen this on television, but I found it this morning. The Russian preparations for military action are not at all limited uh, to Syria. And they're being run by a Joint Coordination Forward Command and War Room established a few days ago by Russia, Iran, Iraq, and Syria, and they're in Baghdad. The Operation Command Center, combining the forces of Russia, or coordinating the forces of Russia, Iran, Iraq, and Syria, are being run out of a command center in Baghdad. That's their war room. Now, what does that mean to you? 
Well, there's a U.S. Central Command Forward Jordan War Room north of Amman, which is coordinating the efforts of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Israel, Jordan, and the UAE in support of Syrian rebel operations against the Assad regime. So right now, Israel is very deeply involved with the United States, with Saudi Arabia, with Qatar, with Jordan and the UAE in supporting the Syrian rebels who want to take out Assad. So for those of you who are confused, Israel wants Assad to go. And I think it's a huge mistake on their part. Maybe they know something I don't know, and probably do. I'm just a man alone in a radio studio somewhere near San Francisco who studies world affairs without, let's say, the advantages of the intelligence that military and political leaders have, but also without the disadvantages that military and politi political leaders have. I don't have any of the disadvantages. I don't know what I'm supposed to think. I don't know who's feeding me information that may be false. So therefore, all I can do is use what God has given me, which is logic. My logical faculties are still quite really good, excellent as a matter of fact, and my analytical abilities and my, my study of history. And I can tell you that this is a collision course. We're on a collision course right now because all of Obama's shenanigans and charade about fighting ISIS has been exposed. If one thing has been exposed, with the Russian bombing campaign today, what has it been? It's been that Obama's been lying through his teeth about fighting ISIS. He has not been fighting ISIS, not at all. He's been fighting Assad with a mercenary army called the Free Syrian Army. We've given them weapons and training. They're using M16s. And basically, this mercenary army consists of the al-Nusra Front, which this, this government itself calls uh, a terrorist organization, and uh, ISIS. We're actually supporting ISIS. So when you look at it very carefully, it's kind of sickening to look at. When you want to actually look at this straight in the eye, you've got the United States, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Israel, Jordan, and the UAE supporting the Syrian rebel operations against the Assad regime, which means that they're also supporting ISIS. Why? Saudi Arabia is a Sunni nation. Jordan is a Sunni nation. Do you understand this is still an ancient tribal battle between the Sunnis and the Shia? And so what what do we stand where do we stand on all this? What are we sticking our noses in there for? Why in the world is the United States on the side of the Sunnis in their battle against the Shiites? Well, Iran is a predominantly a Shiite nation. So you could argue, well, this is a way of fighting Iran. Well, if we're fighting Iran, why did the United States of America, through John Kerry and Obama, just give them a green light to an attack, a, a nuclear weapons? Why? It gets very complicated, by the way. And so you have to understand that this swiftly evolving Syrian situation has to be seen in the context of what is actually going on on the part of the United States and Israel. I'm sorry to tell you again, it's wag the dog. I've said it for months. It wasn't easy for me to say it because Israel, I continue to support Israel for numerous reasons. But the fact of the matter is, I support America first. And America's security interests and national interests are not necessarily the same as Israel's security interests and national interests, by the way. Now, having said that, I hope Israel doesn't overplay its hand and go to in, get into aerial combat with Russia. They might win, by the way. But in the, long, in the long term, they can't win that war. The Israeli fighter pilots are probably the best in the world next to ours, probably on par with ours. If I don't know who's better. Nobody really knows. I'm sure the Israeli pilots can knock the Russian planes out of the sky. Let's put it to you that way, if it came to that. But I really hope that the Israelis are not that foolish to think that winning a battle is going to help them win the war. Because in the long run, they're too small a nation to take on the bear. And they'd be much smarter to understand that the bear has national interests that may be in conflict with their interests in the short term. But in the long term, they may be safer once ISIS is decimated in the Middle East. I think Israel gravely miscalculated and caused great havoc in the Middle East personally. The more I look at this, and I do analyze it in great detail in Government Zero. Great detail. Government Zero is the book. It's the sin qua non of all of my books. You can buy it online at Amazon right now. It'll be out in a few weeks when I'll tell you much more about it. And I hope you'll rush into the bookstores and clean out the shelves to send a resounding message 
to Barry Obama that the king has no clothes and we see right through his charade. But let's get back to facts at hand here. It's Israel again. Israel again. Israel again. U.S., Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Israel, Jordan, and the UAE in support of Syrian rebels to overthrow Assad. Now, why would Israel want to 